Are you like me? Were you fed up of the Choose Your T500 being rigid and often falling out the sink and just generally not being very helpful? And then once you're done with your boiler and you want to store it, do you take the tubes off knowing that you've got to try and heat them up to get them off, heat them up to get them on, and it's just starting to get weakened and you need to cut bits off? And it's just it's a pain in the backside. So I have a solution. Now, uh, not put these on properly. That's why they're easy to get off. PVC, the tubes that we get given when we buy our T500s is great. It's good quality and everything else. But it's rubbish and it needs to be thrown in the bin. Reason being, it's so rigid. And well, as soon as you get some hot water coming through them, they start softening up and it's great. But then they can fall out your sink. And, and like this, it's just not very convenient. So seriously, throw them away. Now you might have seen one of my other videos which talks about different types of tubing and what to use when. Now what I would recommend is silicon tubes. And the reason why, as you know your PVC tubes are very rigid and if you bend them over too much of an angle they'll kink, you'll get white marks and that's meaning it's being damaged. Look at this. Perfect, every single time. Silicon can literally be twisted, bent, whatever you want, and it springs back into shape. It's amazing stuff. So I'm going to show you what I do with my boiler or my T500. Now I've already set this up, so unfortunately I'm not going to be showing you cutting the tubes or anything like that because so I've already got everything sorted on mine. I've put this back to pretty much uh, out of the box so that way you can then see what I've done, why I've done it, and I'll explain it. And trust me, you will want to do it. Now what I've done is I've bought some quick release valves. These are actually ideal. These are these ones that I'm using are made for an air compressor gun. So garages when they're obviously pumping up your tires or, or um, air tools generally. That's what these are used for. Oh no, they're not food grade. But why do we care? These aren't touching anything to do with our spirit. They're literally going from the water in to cool and out again. So we don't care it's not food grade. And it'll either go down the sink, or if you're a good person, you'll be collecting it and then reusing it next time you distill. And the beauty with these are, is literally as a click, it's now sealed, squeeze, it comes out. Very, very easy. So the way you do it, you're going to take a tube. Now I'm going to do this, as you can see. Take the back off. Slide the tube over. It's got a little ridge there, so you can just push that over, screw it back up, and it's that simple. Really, really is. I'm going to do the other end. So I'm going to, oh, you know, to put two female adapters on there. Now, the reason why these are so good as well is that way you have the absolute minimum on your still, on your T500. So when you're storing, it's going to be a lot, lot easier. There we go. Now, I've now got two female adapters. Now, these ones that I bought have got a, a special uh, seal on them. So right now, it's solid. <sniffs> Can't blow anything through. But as soon as the female version goes in, a bit like your outside wash, to, uh, your garden hose sort of thing, it pushes through a little, or pushes the valve out of the way, and it allows air or liquid to go through. Now, what I use is this is a six centimeter internal diameter tube with a 10 centimeter or 10 millimeter outside, so six and 10. So that means the wall thickness is two mil thick. I've tried some that are uh, one and a half and one mil thick, and, and unfortunately it's too rubbery and it wants to fall in on itself because it has no rigidity. You want that two mil wall thickness. I've also tried ones that were two and a half and three mil, and they're a bit too rigid and they're bit kind of stuck and it's harder to bend them. So two mil is the perfect way to go. And I'd highly recommend six slash 10 uh, that works really well. These quick connectors are uh, 30 SP and 30 PP. The SP is the female version and the PP is the male version. The 30 denotes the actual size of the connector. So you can buy all sorts of different sizes. I think 20, 30, 40, and it keeps going up depending on the size of the tube. So 30 works great for this tubing. And that's it. That's simple. Now, let's show you how I rig this up. So, first thing I did, was obviously I use my kitchen tap, so I'll screw the bottom, and I can then put the adapter on, which screws onto there, and I put in a small silicon tube, 
and an ML version. So that goes on there. Then I created two very small female and male. And I use the female versions for water coming in and the male for going out, hence there. So that can go on the bottom there. And then this one, it's a bit of a squeeze because that's a nine mil pipe and this is six mil internal. So you can see six mil going over nine mil, but because silicon can expand and is so squishy and malleable, it works. Just a bit of an effort to push it on there. So there we go. Good news also with silicon is because it naturally wants to move, you do not need to heat it up at all to get it on. There you go, nice and simple. And then I created like an extension tube as such. That goes on there. And that then goes to there. So now, oh, come on. As you can see, I've got my water in. Nice and simple. And then I created a female with nothing. And that is my output. So from here, just drop that into the sink. Now, this tube I'm using, I bought food grade. Makes no difference. Again, not using for food grade. But this one is also resistant up to 120 degrees Celsius. Now, obviously, we don't want to go above 100, so that's perfect. And this just drops. You're never going to get it moving or anything. So right now, out of the box, this is the perfect adaption for the T500. When I'm done, I literally pull those done. When I take this off, no gigantic tubes hanging around or sticking that I've got to try and wrap around. None of it. That simple. That easy. And if we're storing the actual tubes, well, let's, let's, let's put them in a small bag if we really want to. Makes no difference. So again, really easy. Now the next upgrade that I would severely recommend to you do is the head, where it joins the product condenser to the reflux condenser. Now, the reason why you'd want to do that, and also the reason why I managed to get this off so easily, I upgraded that to silicon. The reason why you want to upgrade this is running this as the T500, the way Steel Spirits wants you to run it, worked really well. But if you want to start using this more in pot still mode, um, well, the, the reflux coil is still going to be running. And if you then want to start adjusting and raising your column, adding extra bits in there to then get better ABV, again, you're going to want to separate them and run them as separate units. Well, you can't have the box. So we adapt it. So what we need to do is create two more. Again, you've got your input and output. So your output for your product condenser will go to a female. And this will then now become an input because there's your output. And you're still keeping it as an output. So let's put one of those on there. And there we go now. So going back to the way it was, if we want to run this in normal mode, there we go. While a little bit larger, we've still kept that loop going. If we, so now I can run it to a standard with a quick release. But if I say, go, oh, no, I need to run this with my extended columns, well, let's extend that. Let's plug back in my output for the reflex condenser. So there's my tube, which is going to be dangling. My custom-made water flow regulator, which you've seen in other videos, one water input, two output, two separate water pumps, two separate needle valves. I'm going to put that down there. And now, to mix this up a bit, I'm going to put my adapter onto there. So that is now powering that. I'm then going to put the product condenser pump into here. And then exact same male to female goes into the reflux condenser. And that will then plug into the reflex, reflux. And then just as I've got down here, a female to nothing, to a, a no connector. So that goes onto there, down into the sink. Ah, looks a bit messy, but that's because it's not on the boiler and it's all a little bit compacted. So right now, obviously got that fitting my tank, one needle valve going to the product, 
and then that output goes straight into the sink. My other going up into the reflux and then output into the sink. So it's a bit of a mess when you're running it. You've seen by my other videos, it's all over the place, but it works. I've got my needle valves, I can adjust anywhere I want to. And then when I've gone, right, I've now finished my run, I'm gonna pack it down. I can literally pack everything down very, very easily, shove it all in the sink, put the tap back on, give them a bit of a rinse. If I want to, shouldn't need to, it's just water and job done. Now what you can do as well, what I tend to do, is I'll put a couple of cable ties there and there. So these are just a bit more rigid and together. But you've still got that, I've made this one deliberately longer, so this can then loop round and lock into there. You'll get no kinks or anything like that. It's up to you, you might not want to do that. Do it how you want to do it. The other way I used to do it, I'd also connect them to the actual product condenser column. And again, that way, just a bit more rigid and a bit more of a single unit, but it really works. But it doesn't stop there. You can do it with everything else. So if you've got the Alembic head as well, or Alembic condenser, and obviously again, those tubes are a pain in the backside. So why not make yourself two smaller ones? So that way you've now got one there for your output, and then one here your input. So again, this will rig onto that system. So it's all interchangeable. And when I'm storing it, and I don't want these getting in the way, I can just lock them together like this. And use a tiny little bit of a Velcro strap, strap around it. And now, all nice, neat and tidy. And I know that these connect, these tubes are not gonna be pulled off, on, off, start wearing. So just a quick release valve. And if any of them do break, it's very easy to just unscrew it and pop another one on. So I highly recommend it. Silicon tubes, quick release air connectors. There you go. Well, if you have any questions, obviously give me a shout. But uh, hopefully you found this uh, helpful. And if you uh, have done this yourself, please drop me an email. Uh, I'd love to see what you've done, your creation, your water valves, quick release valves. Um, it, it's great to see. So please email me at info at brewingadvice.com. Dr. UK. All right. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I'll speak to you soon.